Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope you're doing well. In the MGTOW circles, the red pill circles, those two are very close. Men going the wrong way. That's what MGTOW stands for. They're talking about how rich men should use surrogacy uh, except their children. So they went from really demonizing single mothers, saying they should be concubines, perpetually impoverished, no child support, no funding from the state, so no financial benefit, social safety net. They should be financially punished for leaving their husbands, and regardless of the reason, except they say for abuse, but then they minimize what is abuse. They are advocating now to fully replace a mother with a nanny. Think about this. These MGTOW guys, Sandman has told people to do this. Pearly Things has retweeted him. His fans are talking about it. They're saying, if you're rich, find a woman to grow your baby. Once that child is born, take the baby away. So no breast milk, no bonding. Okay. Put that woman aside she's grown your child for you like an animal that's how they view her she's going to be bleeding for 40 days her breasts swollen hormonal things going on and she's just going to get a stack of cash selling off her baby a nanny's going to come in has no spiritual connection to the child be with the baby feed it formula crap and then the father will be working all the time and so the child will be denied the privilege of being raised with its mother, denied the spiritual and beautiful connection that comes with breastfeeding, bonding, snuggling, cuddling, okay, the protection that comes from a mother, a healthy mother that is, to being raised with a nanny who is pretty resentful, not really into it, doing it for the money. Most nannies are not very good, sorry, but they're not going to love the child the same way as the mother. Yes, there are exceptions. But I'm talking in a general sense on a deeper spiritual level. And so this is their solution to not getting married. And they're running away from any type of secular marriage contract and spiritual contract, as in religious ceremonies, because they fear women so much and they don't trust their own ability to keep a woman, to find the right one. And now their solution is use women to grow children and then don't look at the economic consequences of renting a room, a womb, sorry, renting a womb. Don't look at the spiritual consequences just erase the mother role entirely. I kept saying that MGTOW is a threat to women. Red pill is a threat to women. And you can think it's all about going after gold diggers and hoochie mamas and uh, OnlyFans chicks, but no. In reality, the f the fact that they are minimizing and degrading the spiritual and noble and even importance of a mother shows you how deeply they hate women. I'm not joking here. If you hate mothers and you think a baby doesn't need to have that precious time with their mom and that it has zero negative outcomes because they believe... Uh, single fathers will raise better children than a single mother. So now they've gone from, hey, stay married, to, well, the baby doesn't even need a mom. They just need money and a nanny and formula and a dad who's gone all the time working, and the kid will be totally fine. So it's not a mom and a dad, a mom who stays home, sacrifices 18 years, does her best, right? Nope. It's not that. Just let some foreign nanny raise your kid and that'll be sufficient it's just quite absurd it's i mean i'm holding back being more rude but 
As someone who did not have a healthy mom, let alone have a mom around and was raised with a grandma with mental illness, anyone who denies the importance of having a mother there to nurture you, to care for you, teach you femininity, teach you strength, teach you homemaking skills, and to assume that a nanny can just replace a mom is exactly what feminism says. So how was Red Pill fighting feminism when both feminism and Red Pill MGTOW guys are contending a nanny is capable of replacing the biological mother? Now if the mom's a crackhead like mine, how mine was, and the person who sometimes would watch after me was a Mormon woman who was uh, married until her husband passed away um, from cancer, but she watched all the kids. That's quite a different thing, isn't it? But she's not my mom. And as someone who grew up without having a good mom, you have this hole in you that never gets filled, and you have a very strange desire for people to be your mom when you see a very strong, healthy, nurturing woman. But the fact of the matter is they'll never be your mom. And it's just a trial you have to carry with you for the rest of your life. Adopted kids suffer with this as well. My brother who was adopted when he was a kid, he's come back. Slowly started to build a relationship. Um, but obviously, he has an attachment to his adoptive parent and not his biological one. But still, there was that need to find out who your mom is. And that pain will never be gone. We'll all grow up with problems. We all have a trial to bear in this life. But for these MGTOW guys to push vasectomies and then to push surrogacy is a very sick philosophy that's not a solution for men. Alright? Don't give me this crap like, oh, you know, MGTOW and Red Bull, they're not philosophies. They're this, they're that. You can play rhetorical semantics with me all you want, but it's an agenda and I believe an ideology that they're living and applying. Okay? And so, I think it's very important for women to talk even more about the virtues of motherhood, learn from others' mistakes, do lots of self-reflection. All of us will make errors, but men should not choose surrogacy. I have even seen this Sandman MGTOW guy say uh, he'll marry a transgender and then use a surrogate, right? Other times, the Sandman guy has said he will have a sex robot and then use a surrogate. Meanwhile, he uses heavily lustful thumbnails on BitChute for his videos. So you can see that these broken MGTOW men, they're not these brave loners going off into the mountains and being a mountain man or the, the red man on his painted prairie horse to conquer the world or the last samurai. They are men who pay adult female content creators for content that, or they watch for free, but still they're fueling that market and they're stuck watching strangers do stuff on a screen lewdly. Usually those women are drug addicts. Uh, girls with daddy issues, women who have no honor for themselves. So they like watching runaways and the lowest of women engage in that activity with uh, really gross men. And they think that's actually better than having a chance or a roulette at a relationship with a living, breathing, functioning human being. And they make fun of reformed Christian women. I've shared that in the past. And on my vlog, they'll be like, oh, your trad wife was once, you know, getting dug out by all these men. So they mock women for changing. They mock women for being single moms and choosing not to stay in a relationship they don't like and sticking around or raise the kid. Now, they're just going further by saying, Surrogacy and vasectomies and using your hand all the time and watching strangers on a screen. This is a very spiritually deficient system. 
the beautiful blessing of motherhood and for children to be with her mother is something magnificent and endearing. And it's a tragedy when kids get placed by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a bad mom, but they will be compensated in the hereafter for their suffering and paradise will erase all their earthly sufferings. Sure, you can say that sounds cliche, you don't believe it and whatnot, but still, the suffering is temporary in terms of this dunya and in terms of this reality. But we can help people to want to try to do their best to become good moms, to, to have a good marriage or to be chaste. We have to help them. But telling men, for pearly things to retweet these men, saying that if you have money, don't share your wealth by taking a beautiful, virtuous girl out of poverty. No. Get an immigrant who's strapped for cash and exploit her to grow your baby. And don't care about what happens to her after. Right? Screw her, she grew your baby, right? And deny that baby the smell of their mother, the voice of their mother and put them in a bassinet by themselves, have a nanny there who's probably texting on her phone, has no real spiritual connection to this child, and you're off, you know, in your room, touching yourself, watching strangers on a screen, counting your cash, high-value MGTOW guy. Think about this. These people are very depraved. They resent women to the point where now they don't even think a child needs a mom. They have gone from thinking that women have things to work on to now children don't even need moms. So when feminists say, I don't need no man and I'm sufficient for my kids to having the same in the red pill and MGTOW movement. Both taking one parent out of the picture. We have to get back to the basis here. Because that's a very worrisome trend. To view a, a child's soul as something transactional. You put some money in a bank account, out pops a baby. And for women who engage in surrogacy, that's a pretty evil science in my view. Because you are helping to bring women down to such a low level. It's, it's really heartbreaking. I don't know how these monstrous surrogate women can give up their baby. I mean, when my child was born, both my children, I had the deepest anxiety closing my eyes. I have this strong connection of to protect her from nurses or abuse. It's 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 strange when you see a woman who doesn't have that protective love for her child. A true mom who's the best mom in the world is someone who would lay down their life. If a bear is coming and there's no way out, better for the bear to eat you, you know, and hope someone finds your kid. There are women who don't see pregnancy as a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They care about money. And there are men now getting women to exploit their cervix. First, it was men who told women, do adult entertainment. We'll exploit your mental sadness. Get you to, to ruin yourself, you know, your reputation so no man will want to marry you will throw cash in your face. Now, grow us a baby, and then with the stretch marks you have, and the memories, and you felt your baby move, and you, you missing them, you have nothing to do with them. Your part of that child's life is over. You can never see them again. You'll know nothing about them. Sayonara, here's your bag of cash. Go deal with it. That's very sick. And then teaching women to shut off their motherly instincts for the sake of money. Isn't that one of the problems of feminism where it's like, hey, put your kid in a daycare, give him formula, pawn him off on a 
crappy daycare service where there's constant un undercover footage of abuse and go and, you know, be your little wage slave. Don't sacrifice being a stay-at-home mom for a while. Just get your bag, girl. Both are wrong. Unless a woman is pushed towards extreme poverty to where she has to work, I get it. But selling your womb to grow a baby is, is dysfunctional and... Even the fat Kardashian, Chloe, she had a surrogate raise her baby and then she said she had a hard time bonding with her child. Think about that. She didn't grow her baby, someone else grew it. And then when she's taking care of this child in the night, her body doesn't have the natural instincts of the spiritual connection to come for this little one and help them. Now there are women who have this sort of deep empathy injured baby like if I saw for example if I was in Palestine and I'm nursing and there's a little abandoned newborn let's make up a scenario here or a baby that needs to be nursed I'm nursing that baby that baby's with me now the mom passed away she's under rubble I got my kid I got that baby I got milk let's go adopted baby I have that in me but some women like Chloe they don't really have that connection. They don't have that capability, that softness. And surrogacy helps women to not have the physical suffering of a child. You should go through the difficult pregnancy process, the difficult postpartum process. It literally makes you stronger. It makes you appreciate your child. It deepens the bond. The fact that when you lift weights... And there's like that, oh, it's so difficult. But then you get muscle and you get more in shape. You get your reward. Motherhood is the same. You take a shortcut to become a mom. There's going to be some things left out. You can care about your kid because you look at them and they're biologically yours. But this mad science of being able to grow your baby outside of your own body. Of course it's not going to be the same. When you're a mom and you have to walk around watching your belly, hoping a criminal doesn't attack you, making sure you're eating good, you feel them move and wiggle, and you wake up in the night to use the restroom, all these difficulties just, I'm very, you get more curious, what does this baby look like? You know, and then after all the pain of giving birth or the C-section, right, you're past your baby in your little hands, I mean, in your hands, and then you see these little tiny human hands. And you see your little baby's nose and all this love and also fear and emotions come forth. And that is a beautiful thing. But if you took a shortcut because you want to look hot for Instagram and you don't want to mess up your plastic surgeon controlled and sculpted body. Obviously you're not going to have the same sacrifice. And surrogacy is something I think is very evil and can be totally exploited. Where rich people who are vain, lazy, and selfish will say, you know, hey lady, grow my baby for me. And these women just having all these emotions and wondering if that baby's okay and having that instinct. And if they don't have that instinct, it's like they're this unnurturing sort of menace in a way they're not truly spiritual or, or a good mother you're a bad mother if you sell your baby if you give your baby up for adoption because you're a drug addict loser yeah you're doing your kid a mercy if you can't get sober right my grandparents raising me and not allowing me to be with my stripper mom while she's doing drugs that was a mercy Right? My mom giving my brother for adoption, that was a mercy. My grandparents and the state taking away my sister to put us with my grandparents because of my mom, that was a mercy. Right? The only child that stayed was one of my other brothers because by that time my mom had gotten sober and she, she fixed her life. Okay? So that's the only kid she got to raise. Encourage women to become better moms. And if you can't have kids, find purpose. See, now, Pearly Thing said that women are only valued for the reproduction, you know, the fertility, that 
uh, wisdom can't come from women and women can't make a difference really they shouldn't participate in the workforce she flip-flops on this and so this can make women who can have kids feel like they have to get a surrogate because otherwise their life has no meaning no you can get meaning you can dedicate your life to a noble cause or just be a good person who doesn't commit crimes and have purpose but using a surrogate in my view is wrong and I wish the technology didn't exist because it's a cheat code that hurts the child you deny them the privilege of a real mom I wonder how these kids later if they look at their mom and be like yeah you're my biological mom you didn't really raise me it's kind of like how I view my dad yeah you're like a sperm donor like you fertilize my mom but you didn't really take care of me so if you die like I'm not even gonna cry because you didn't really put the work in whereas my grandpa he put the work in you see what I'm saying so you're hurting your own self by hiring a surrogate because you're not really the true mom because you didn't grow the child this can be quite harsh for some to hear but it's evil so hearing the MGTOW guys trivialize it like yeah I'll just have all my money and then die with all my money and on my deathbed all my surrogate babies are gonna be looking at me and not having any resentment to the fact that I denied them moms think about that really think about that is that a healthy way to live to deny children the privilege of a mom I really hope I got you to see a new perspective on this topic. I really do. Because even though motherhood is hard, it's still worth it. And obviously relationships are not going to be 24-7 BDSM porno jams. Like how these red pill guys think it is. Oh, you know, if your wife isn't just this... Uh, air, like, they want to have the porno chick mixed with the virgin chick who is like a master chef but never talks and has it's just basically a woman who will get on all fours and let him put his feet on her back and will take any type of treatment from them so their ideal is a woman who doesn't exist and yes they've turned sour because of feminists but their solution is actually going to create more problems and some of their solutions are just the manosphere version of feminism it's really quite sick. And I hope uh, surrogacy becomes illegal worldwide. I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finds a way to just... I mean, obviously Allah is capable of all things. But what I'm trying to say is I hope that technology gets ruined, becomes illegal. People don't do it. It gets shamed. Because if you can avoid denying a child a mom, you should avoid it. You should avoid willfully choosing... To create a life and then denying it the ability to have a mom. You can't complain about fatherlessness and then say the solution to fatherlessness is to get revenge by creating a motherless society. You can't complain about masculine women and then say children don't need a mom. It's really quite strange. But let me know what you think. Even... And you know what's interesting? Even if a woman had a baby and she, I was the wet nurse, I'm still going to feel attached to that child because I nursed it at my own breasts. I would feel pain. If I was a preschool teacher, kindergarten teacher, first grade, I would feel like an attachment to all my students, like hoping the best for them. Like I would miss them. And that's why I chose not to be, like I couldn't, I just couldn't be a a, a, a teacher like that because I would become sad like if I get to the skills to work in a madrasa or something like that like I would feel like so much like oh these kids I hope everyone's all right like you care about those kids which is a sign of being a good teacher not that you wouldn't give discipline and order right but that you feel like okay let's have fun let's learn there's like this motherly aspect and I've heard people say that this happens a lot as an overcorrection when you don't have a mom growing up. Sometimes people who had good moms, they almost satiated in a greedy way 
and then they go off and ruin their lives because they don't really appreciate a mom because they had one. But people who didn't have one often become people who really focus on helping people be moms and stay moms in a healthy way. And I, I find that statement and that theory, that idea to be quite apparent in my own life. Not saying I'm super perfect because everyone makes mistakes and everyone has something to learn. But it was just very jarring that a man would tell his thousands of followers and that pearly things who has literally hundreds of thousands of followers that surrogacy is better than giving that kid a, 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 a mom because men will say oh broken homes ruin things right but then surrogacy creates from the beginning a broken home whereas in when you get married, you don't know what's going to happen. But surrogacy is a guarantee of a broken home. So, I mean, subhanAllah. What a nightmare. What a nightmare. Feminism helped get this movement going. And now this movement is going insane and trying to corrupt good men. And that's why I feel like it's important to speak about it. Let me know what you think. It's an interesting niche topic. But I do enjoy discussing things with you because we expand our minds, we get to see different perspectives, and maybe you'll have something to enlighten me on as well. Let me know, and if you'd like to join my blog, it's www.subscribestar.com slash Hope to see you there.